I spent over 100 hours making an indie game with no game engine. Here's how it went. Hello everyone, Fuelvin here. So back in 9th grade, I was taking an AP Computer Science class, and for our final project of the school year, we could create anything we wanted. So naturally, I thought to myself, why not create my own game? And that's exactly what I did. Now the most logical next step was for me to open up a game engine, and began coding away in C Sharp or C++ using VS Code or whatever other code editor that was conveniently integrated with the game engine. And that's what I would have done, however the catch was that we had to use Eclipse, which was the software that we had been using the entire school year. Now Eclipse is no VS Code. You don't have a fancy editor to write code in, you don't have all of these extra tools and plugins that you can use, so it's a really bare bones software. And in addition to the fact that I could only use this slightly more bougie Notepad++, I had to write the entire project using Java, because that was the programming language that we were learning throughout the entire school year. And that was sort of a problem because Java isn't exactly the best language to be used in web game development, on top of the fact that you don't use Eclipse to create games in the first place. But despite these obvious red flags, I still wanted to create my own game, and not only that, a high quality game, complete with my own graphics and engaging gameplay, because I like to make myself suffer. But if you want to make your own game like I did without the suffering, then you can check out these awesome courses from gamedev.tv, which is the sponsor for this video. They make some of the most popular game development courses on Udemy with over 250,000 positive reviews. And now they have their own website featuring course content ranging from C Sharp and C++ programming to 3D modeling using Blender. I highly recommend you to follow their beginner Unity course bundle, which teaches you from start to finish how to create multiple different 2D and 3D web games using Unity Game Engine. This course is definitely something that I wish I had back when I was getting into game development. And right now, gamedev.tv is offering this course on their website for just $39, which is 85% off. This discount only lasts until the end of the summer, so be sure to click the link in the description below and buy your copy. Anyways, back to the video. I had two and a half weeks before my deadline, so I had to get at least a working version running by then. And I was pretty confident that I could do that, because at the time, I'd been doing digital art, and I had been making games on Scratch for several years. Yes, you could pretty much call me a AAA game developer at that point. But also, I did have experience in Java programming before I even took the computer science class, so I did have intermediate knowledge of coding in general. With all of the prerequisites fulfilled, I began working on my game the day the project was announced. And before you ask, no, I did not spend over 100 hours back then working on my project in just that two and a half weeks, because that's equivalent to a full-time job as a 15-year-old in school. Of course, I spent dozens of those 100 plus hours working on the game after the deadline just for fun. But I'd say that I spent a pretty good chunk of time around three to four dozen hours working on the game before the deadline and got a pretty solid working version running. But anyways, the project I was thinking of making was a top-down Pokemon-style RPG game where you as the player could explore a map and battle monsters. However, doing everything in this glorified Microsoft Word meant that I had absolutely nothing to start with. So I had to create my own graphical user interface, my own rendering system, my own input system, my own game loop, and my own image loading system, which are all normally covered by game engines. My class didn't cover any of this, so I was completely on my own. However, after some searching online, 9th grade me discovered a video on YouTube that showed how to create a working RPG game base, which included a simple tile generator, camera movement, and character walking animations. Now, it wasn't exactly the shortest tutorial ever, but I skipped through the video and took some of the most important functionality that I was looking for, which saved me a lot of time just looking through documentation and painstakingly figuring out stuff by myself. After following pieces that I wanted from the tutorial, and connecting the parts together, and doing a lot of testing, I was able to essentially build up my own sort of janky but working game engine with some basic features in it. Here's how the engine worked. I had this game class, or program, implementing Runnable, which allows me to use my own threads, which will act as my own game loop. I then run the thread when the program starts, then inside of a while loop, I get the computer system's internal clock and calculate a delta time, and once it matches my desired frames per second that I want the game to run on, I call a tick and render method. The tick method acting as a universal update function that tells the rest of the objects in my game to run their code a single time, such as changing their position, and the render method telling all my graphics to redraw themselves so that they accurately reflect any changes made in the tick method. 
In addition to my main game class, I also added several other classes that included a display, keyboard and mouse input managers, a UI manager, and file reader, which also fed from the game loop. So now with all of these implementations, whenever I ran the game, I had an empty screen that was able to handle game logic, take in user input, and render images. So now that I had a working foundation, it was time for me to actually make the content for the game. Similar to most tile-based RPGs, I wanted the player to walk around in four directions. So to start off, I used this free website for creating pixel art called Piskel, and drew some pixel art for a player walk cycle walking up, down, left, and right. I also drew some grass, wall, and tree tiles in another art file, which would act as my map tile sprite sheet. After drawing the sprites, I then exported them to PNG files and put the files into my project folder. As expected, Eclipse did not have any fancy integration for images, so I had to write my own class to first retrieve and read the PNG files in my project, and create a function for cropping the individual images from each sprite sheet, which wasn't too much code, I guess. To crop each image, I needed the starting X and Y position of the area I wanted to crop, and also the width and the height of the area. After that, I stored each image to its own variable, and boom. I could access the images inside of the code whenever and wherever I wanted. This would have still been a lot easier with, say, Unity Game Engine, where downloading the image would have taken longer than adding it into the game. But anyways, with the player and map sprite sheets all loaded in, and with a bit of additional code, I was able to have animated player movement and a moving map similar to the demo project in the video. After I had those features down, the video wasn't able to help me anymore, despite it being almost as long as the entire season of Death Note. So everything else was up to me to figure out how I wanted to implement the rest of the game. Now the first thing I wanted to add was collidable tiles, because what is an RPG game without wall collision? Now I didn't have much trouble making the player collide with the tiles, but making it seamless and glitch free was very difficult and time consuming, which at the time was a surprise to me. With my present knowledge, I know that even with actual game engines which provide built-in collision systems, having flawless collisions typically require you to write additional code in your program and do some tinkering, because usually the built-in collisions don't always work exactly how you want them to. I learned this lesson early on, with this project being one of the first real games that I've ever coded, and oh boy was this part frustrating. I had no default collision framework I could work with like in game engines, so I had to code exactly how I wanted the collision to work by myself. Unfortunately, it wasn't as simple as writing in the player script, move, then check if touching a collision tile, then stop moving. There was a lot of bugs that appeared related to collisions that I had to account for in my code. For example, there would be a few pixels gap between the player and the tile it collided with, which looked wonky, or the player would get stuck to the tile after colliding, or the player would twitch back and forth when touching the tile, or the player would clip into the tile after colliding and teleport to the other side. I didn't feel like a teleportation feature aligned with the content of my game that well, so I spent a lot of time and effort trying to fix these problems. For the collisions, I knew that I needed to account for the player's hitbox and position, the tile's hitbox and position, and the amount that the player was going to move. The rest was up to a lot of trial and error and bug fixing. I managed to scrape together this chunk of code for my collision, and honestly, I can't even tell you how I managed to come up with this, especially because I wrote this 4 years ago, but it works, and based off all my playtesting, it seems to work bug-free, which I'm quite proud of. So now I had collidable tiles along with my player and map, and the next step was to add a battle component where the player can fight monsters. For this part, I added in some bush tiles that the player can walk over, and decided to make it so that there was a small chance the player would encounter a monster and enter a battle every time the player moved over a bush, sort of like Pokemon. I also drew my own enemy, a good old green slime, and added it into the game. While creating the battle component, like the player collision, I didn't have any tutorial I could reference, so I was completely on my own. I ended up making a separate class holding the battle state, where it would essentially contain all of the combat. Then I edited the main game state, which is the one where the player can walk around in the map, and added some code that would make the game transition to the battle state once the player encounters a monster on the map. Gameplay-wise, I wanted the fight to be turn-based, so the player would attack first, then the enemy would attack, then it would go on and on like that. For the player attacking part, I was inspired by Undertale's hit mechanic for dealing damage, so I decided to do something similar for the player's attack turn. So the closer you were to hitting the center of the target, the more damage you dealt. 
after the player dealt damage, it would switch to the enemy's turn. And for that, I implemented this gameplay mechanic where rectangles would appear from the right side of the screen, and the player would have to time the moving cursor so that it hit the rectangles before they reached the left side, otherwise the player would take damage. Because yes, orange rectangles are scary. After the player defends, then it switches back to the player's turn, and then it repeats until either the player runs out of health or the enemy is defeated. I also added a stats button where the player could view the monster's description, damage, and stuff like that, but I didn't get around to finishing, so it's just there as a DLC that you can't get. I also added an escape button where the player could leave the fight. I made all the buttons as well as the battle UI images by creating a new sprite sheet and drawing all my images in it, then adding the images into my separate battle state class. And I wouldn't exactly say I had the best code quality ever. Yeah, it's really bad. One change to my sprite sheet and my game is now interactive abstract art, but that's beside the point. Anyways, I made it so that once the enemy was defeated, it dropped a random amount of gold and experience points, and the player would return back to the map. And lastly, I created a player UI on the top left of the screen that showed the current player's health as well as the player's experience bar and the amount of gold that they have, just to pretend that the player can level up and buy things with gold. Haha. <laughs> and that was pretty much it. That was the game that I spent over 100 hours working on. I could have spent all this time doing something more productive, like learning how to do a handstand or something, but I'd say it was time well spent, and more importantly, it was fun. Overall, I'm pretty proud of what I made, especially since I made it back in 9th grade. Looking back at my code, I feel like I forgot a lot of my thought processes and why I wrote my code that way, but I do remember the good times of grinding this project several hours a day for two and a half weeks up until the project deadline, sometimes even working on it during some of my other classes. So, fun stuff. All in all, would I say it was worth creating a game from the ground up with no game engine, using a coding software and language that is not meant for creating games? Well, the short answer is... If my purpose was result-oriented and my goal was to create a fully-fledged game, I would have been better off submitting a smaller scale project to my CS class and dedicating my time towards using a game engine where they're actually suited for building games. In the same amount of time that I spent creating the game using Eclipse, I could have created the same game using, say, Unity Game Engine, and could have even added more features to it. But since I wanted to be super extra and create the entire game using Eclipse, I'd say it was worth it in terms of having something that I could show off to in front of the class and also be proud of. It was also a good learning experience because building the entire game by myself allowed me to see the structure of how games work at its core, like the update and render functions, user input, image rendering, and stuff like that, which I wouldn't have necessarily been able to experience if I'd used a game engine instead. Even though the process of making the entire game was much more difficult and time consuming compared to if I'd used a game engine, Altogether, I'd say what really mattered was that I enjoyed making the game from beginning to end. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I highly recommend you to check out gamedev.tv's Beginner Unity Course Bundle. If you're interested, be sure to click the link in the description below and buy your copy. If you want to download my game and try it out for yourself, then I've included the link to my project on GitHub in the description below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And while you're at it, join my Discord, link is in the description below. Anyways, that's it for this video, see ya!